Здравствуйте, welcome back to Russian Theory Poems and Paintings. Today is day 132, and so we're talking more about feelings, uh, getting some new vocabulary, and also reviewing a bit of grammar. So uh, this video will probably be a bit short uh, because there's not really a whole lot of new grammar to discuss. Uh, but you can use the grammar we're discussing today to uh, think of some responses to some of the discussion questions in the in the book. Um, look at a quick painting here. Vesna uh, Bakustodiev, so spring. Солдат помогает испуганным, хорошо одетым женщинам перейти в воду по длинной доске. Может быть, он в одну из них влюблен. Okay, so some PPPs here, right? A soldier is helping frightened, right? There's our verb we had yesterday. Frightened, well-dressed women to cross water along a long board, right? A desk is a board or plank. Maybe he's in love with one of them. Okay, влюблен, он влюблен, right? He is in love, also a PPP. He's enamored, right? He's in love with one of them. Okay, so uh, let's try this uh, with some other verbs of feeling, uh, right? A lot of these are ones we had yesterday, and let's just, or we may have seen before, let's just practice making PPPs. So again, these we talked about how common PPPs are, and of course a lot of them are um, used with verbs of feeling, right? Like uh, just take to surprise, right? Surprised, as we saw in the last chapter. So let's just crank out a few of these and see how good you are at it. Uh, now remember, for the PPPs, we're going to almost always be using the perfective form of the verb, right? So, frightened, that'll be ispugani, ispugani. Surprised, right? Refer to the pair there. Take a guess. Udivlionni, udivlionni, right? An instressed noun, a verb. Uh, upset, rastroyanni. Rastroyanly, right? Stem stress. Offended, abijanly, abijanly, right? Some of these we had last chapter, but again, now good to review them in terms of talking about feelings. Uh, worried, zvalnovanly, zvalnovanly. Disappointed, razicharovanly, razicharovanly. Calmed down or reassured, uspakoyanly, uspakoyanly. In love, or enamored, or something, I don't know how we could best translate that. Vlublionny, uh, vlublionny, and look at the idiom there, you're, you're, you're in, literally in, I don't even know how to say this again, in loved with, into someone, basically, you get kavo, into someone, so you're enamored into someone. I'm not sure. Again, sometimes trying to translate these literally just, it's kind of a dead end. It's, it, it stops being very useful. But at any rate, what you say in Russian is very different than the English idiom in love with, right? You're, you're enamored into someone. We could say you're into them. I guess we say that. Maybe that's the closest equivalent. Anyway, девять uh, crushed раздавленный so that can mean literally crushed or just kind of you've had your spirit crushed. Uh, you're dispirited. Upset, embarrassed, smushonly, smushonly. That verb has a short Slavonic mutation, which by the way we can see looking at the imperative, right? That uh, the, the imperfective, right, which is a derived imperfective. We see smushats, and that's telling us that this, this verb has short Slavonic mutations. Similarly, look at the pair ubijdaits ubidits, right? So the derived imperfective isn't ubijdaits, it's ubijdaits, church Slavonic. So convinced would be ubijdionny, ubijdionny v chom. I'm convinced in something is the Russian idiom. Okay, number 12 of dachnavlyach, dachnavit, to inspire. So inspired would be in stress. Okay, let's fill in a few of these uh, PPPs we've just created. And again, uh, uh, here, I think in all of these, we're going to need a short form, right? Again, as in the predicate position. So everyone was so surprised. Right? Everyone was surprised. Uh, he was offended by that which I said. On был обижен тем, что я сказал. Three, we were very worried. Мы были очень взволнованы, взволнованы. 
Chitir, uh, she will be upset when she hears about this. Ana budget, uh, let's see, upset, I don't remember what word we were using exactly, right? Oh, yeah. Rastroyana. Ana budet rastroyana, kagda abetam uslishit. Piet, the fans were upset after the defeat. Balierstiki bili rastroyani posli parajenia. Okay, and finally, the child was very frightened. Ribionek buil ochin is pugan. Is pugan. Okay, so some pretty simple grammar, but very useful. And again, in the book there, you can, uh, you have a few scenarios there where you can tell a little story about when you felt some of these things using short form PPPs. Now let's make some verbal nouns uh, to create nouns of feeling. Okay, so again, you're seeing how some of this grammar works out on a practical level, uh, right? What if we want to take a PPP like ubijdjone, which means convinced, and get the noun equivalent, which would be conviction, right? And remember, this is pretty easy. Uh, uh, conviction would be ubijdjene, right? Remember, we don't have to worry about the yo versus yes stuff when we're making verbal nouns. Ubijdjene. Nastrayenia, that means tuned or something literally, or this can also be in the sense of mood, right? How are you tuned? How are you, what's your frame of mind, I guess we might say? Mood is nastrayenia, nastrayenia. Uh, inspiration is uh, vdachnavienia, vdachnavienia. And that's a bit of an unusual form there. Again, when we're dealing with PPPs, and, and the like, we will see exceptions also with verbal nouns. Um, they're relatively uncommon, but uh, again, if you see one here and there, don't be, don't let your world come crashing down, right? Uh, just deal with that, okay. Uh, okay, disappointment, right? From there we get and that's the feeling of, right, being disappointed. Uh, surprise, Udivlenia. From udivlionne, we get udivlenia. That's the feeling of being surprised. Surprise. Shest, uh, uspokajenia. Uspokajenia, a sense of calm, a sense of relief. Um, now, of course, keep in mind that most uh, common nouns aren't verbal nouns, right? So there are certain feeling verbs that could produce verbal nouns, but of course there are all, all, there are all sorts of feelings that are just simply nouns that aren't derived from verbs, right? So here's a quick overview. Uh, some of these we've seen. Chustva, Lyubosh. Okay, love for someone would be k, right? So again, keep an eye out for these little idioms that we're marking up in the vocab lists. Nyanavist, Drujba, Strach, Nadjezda, Taska, Po, right? Longing for something. Taska is, um, a lot of people, say that it's untranslatable. I don't think that's, I think that's a bit overblown, right? I think longing is pretty close. Uh, sometimes I like to add that it's it's often kind of objectless longing, right? It's some kind of existential longing where part of the point of it is you're not quite sure what exactly it is you want, right? So I like to translate it as an empty longing. Um, but so anyway, uh, but you know, some, some, some people, Nabok have quite famously said that the sport is borderline untranslatable, um, who knows? But anyway, very common word, by the way, taska, especially in literature. Grust, achaenia, shastia, radest, terpenia or neterpenia, volnenia, zavist, revnest, gordest, stid, skuka. Okay, so I uh, see how many of those you know, uh, and in the book you can answer a few questions. What do you feel when you think about various things, right? Uh, and here we could just put a list of these nouns, right? These feelings we feel in the accusative, right? Because we are feeling them. There are, they are serving as direct objects. Okay, another way to think of kind of building vocab is to look at verbs that are related to nouns of feeling, right? That are you know, form from the same root or, uh, and, and basically the, right, just verb forms of the same word. A lot of these, again, we've had, right? Chustva, that's related to chustvavit. Lyubov is related to lubit. Nienavist, to nienavidit, right? To hate, literally, to refuse to look at someone or something. 
Now, for some of these, right, there, there, could, there is an equivalent, right, from the same root, like from bayatsa, and we get bayazing, that's, that's the, the related noun, but that's not the normal word anymore for fear. That would be strach, which is obviously from a different root. Okay, uh, related to nadjezda, the noun is nadjezda, grust is related to grustit, gordest to gardica, right, both of those are related to the adjective gordy, which means proud, stid is related to stidica, skuka to skuchajca, skuchishsya, right, to be bored or to miss, zavist to zavidovic, and revnost to revnavat. Okay, so uh, again, there are a few discussion questions in the book, uh, so use these models. Again, watch out for certain cases you may need if you're answering these uh, questions. Okay, finally, uh, a painting here by Kramskoy called Nyutyeshnaya Gorya, Inconsolable Grief. Right, so Gorya is a, another noun there meaning grief, sadness or in this case, mourning for someone who's died. You see she's wearing black there. Okay, what about adjectives? Again, we can take basic nouns of feeling and uh, think of related adjectives. Some of these we've had, some of them we haven't. Chustva gives chustvitelny, right, sensitive. Strach gives strachny. Nadezhda is related to nadezhny, or beznadezhny, meaning hopeless. Grust, grustny, zavist, zavistlivy, meaning someone who is envious. By the way, in a lot of those examples, when we're describing someone who has a certain quality, we get evy or livy, right? We get that little suffix. Another example here, revnist, we get revnivy, revnivy, right? Someone who's a jealous person, they feel jealousy. Gordist gives gordy, or again, it's not that it, so much that it gives it, these are just related, right, they, they share a common root. Skuka, skuchny, uh, right, now there, actually this skuka, that really is just kind of a very basic noun with um, the root skuk, and then we've got skuka, right, to make it a feminine noun, and you see that gives us the adjective skushni, where we get the mutation ka to ch, and then we add our adjectival ending ni, and we get our adjective skushni. And finally, uh, related to tirpienya is tirpilivli, and again, there's that livli suffix, tirpilivli is someone who's patient, nia tirpilivli means impatient. Okay, so that's that's it for today. Again, just really today vocabulary more than anything else. And so try to use it to answer some of the discussion questions in the book and learn to talk about uh, feelings. Again, using nouns, verbs, uh, de-verbals, adjectives, all of these things that, as we now see, we can often think of in terms of families of words. And by the way, this is something we're going to do a lot more of in book four when we talk a bit more carefully and a bit more extensively about what a Russian root is and how a certain root will give rise to nouns, adjectives, verbs, and then in turn to de-verbals and so forth. So we get these entire families of, of uh, vocabulary items, and that's a great way to learn vocabulary. It's a much more efficient way than simply learning words in isolation. Okay, so uh, that's it for today. Until next time, do svidaniya.